I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name, since I have been redeemed. Glory in my Savior's name. I have a Christ that satisfies since I have been redeemed. To do His will, my highest price since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. I have a home prepared for me since I have been redeemed, where I shall dwell eternally since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed. Glory in his name since I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's name. Are you glad to be redeemed this evening? Praise the Lord. Brother Dexter, would you open us up in a word of prayer this evening? Um, other announcements I have on the, on the calendar. On September 20th, we have our uh, King's Daughters uh, meeting. Uh, October 3rd. Uh, first teen activity in a while. Uh, I'm going to have the teens over our house, the Houston household. It'll be from 3 to 7 p.m. on a Saturday. Uh, no cost for that. Uh, excited about having a time of fellowship with our young people again. October 13th, uh, Ladies Fellowship. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, ladies, if you're interested in joining that. I encourage you to do so. And October 17th, again on a Saturday, uh, Junior Activity from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, no cost for that. Looking forward again to spend some time with our juniors. October 25th through 28th, we have our fall revival. Yes, and we are excited. I'm praying for the Lord to do great things that week as our brother Stephen Brackeen comes and brings us the word of God. Um, the last thing I wanted to, oh, actually I have two more things. Um, choir practice is going to resume on October 11th. Choir practice is going to resume on October 11th. And the last thing I have this evening, a um, card from... Mazingo family, uh, Miss Pam asked me to read it. It says, we would like to thank our church family for all the cards, texts, calls, and food sent during our mother's passing. We especially appreciate each prayer. Your thoughtfulness will always be remembered, Pam. So she wanted me to read that. So uh, thank you, everyone who, uh, who came out and supported the Mazingo family uh, during the passing of her mother. I'm sure they still covet your prayers during that time, during this time. Um, let's all stand together. We'll sing this last song together this evening as we worship. I'd rather have Jesus and worship together this evening. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than man's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than world. 
rather be true to his holy name than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin and swain. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. He's rarer than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out of the comb. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread swain. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I hope you that that's your prayer this evening. You can be seated. Pastor Cook. Uh, I'm going to ask you, if you will, take your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke chapter number nine. Luke chapter number nine. I'm pulling a little bit of an audible. Uh, I had a different message prepared and then uh, this afternoon the Lord changed my heart on it and uh, I wanted, we're doing our uh, study on the titles that Jesus holds and uh, I got to a, a section of scripture and um, um, kind of felt the Lord leading us uh, this direction. We'll return to the other next week, but uh, uh, we're going to be looking this evening at following Jesus. What all uh, it means what it all in, in entails, things of that nature. Uh, Luke chapter number nine. Uh, I'm going to read a, a piece of a, a, a excerpt of scripture just a handful of chapters away. Luke chapter number 14, uh, starting in verse 25, Jesus is going to be speaking here. Uh, it says, and there, uh, went, uh, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, he's not literally telling us that we've got to hate these folks. It's an idiom. He's given us an understanding of the love that we're supposed to have for him uh, and uh, the people or the, uh, the folks in our family that hold second place, the, the amount of love and uh, uh, compassion and uh, desire of following that we have uh, for him, it needs to look like hate. We need to love him so much more uh, than anyone or anything else. And so uh, verse 27 says, and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you Intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he hath laid a foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth uh, not down, and consulteth whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other gather, uh, the other uh, is yet a great way off, he sendeth uh, an, amb uh, uh, an ambassage and desires conditions of peace. So likewise... Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus gives us an understanding that discipleship comes at a great cost. 
That we need to count that cost, uh, uh, determine whether or not we want to be uh, committed to him, whether or not we can accept his terms and his conditions of being his disciple. Back in Luke chapter 9, he gives us an understanding of those that are followers of Jesus, what it takes to be a follower, what it takes to go alongside and the conditions that we must meet. I remember when, uh, when uh, we lived there in Michigan and Weston was coming up, just a little bitty fella, and uh, he loved to go hunting with daddy. And uh, we did squirrel hunting and coon hunting and things of that nature. We had some, uh, some great uh, dogs and great friends that we would go with, and uh, he just loved it. And uh, when we first started hunting, he was a, such a little fella that, that most of the time I would have to carry him uh, through the woods to, uh, from the place where the truck was to the tree, whatever it was. And so as he got a little bit bigger, that, that task or that job as dad uh, got harder and harder, as you can imagine. Uh, I remember one night he asked, or one day he asked if he could go with me. And I said, absolutely. And uh, we set out, we prepared, we were going out squirrel hunting. And uh, I said, now, if you go with me today, you're going to have to walk everywhere by yourself unless we get to some deep water or something that you just can't get over or get around. You're going to have to do all the walking by yourself. And, and he said, yeah, I could do that. And, you know, his legs were so little. He had to take about five times as many steps as I did uh, to keep up. But I remember walking uh, across a field, going to a, a, a section of trees. And as we're walking across this field, it had been chisel plowed. And he's having to walk up and down these different rows. And he looks up at me and he says, Daddy, this sure is trippy. That's, that's, I guess that's little kid talk for uh, uh, this is rough terrain, but it sure is trippy. Uh, the, the idea and the, uh, the, what, what I wanted to get at with uh, telling that story is following in someone else's footsteps, following in the path that's set before us, it's not always easy. Now, Jesus gives us an understanding that as we follow him and as we go through this life and as we endeavor to be his disciples, be his followers, as we uh, commit ourselves to this life of Christianity, that it will be hard, but we don't have to go through it by ourselves. That's the, that's the beauty of, uh, of being a child of God, of having the Holy Spirit, of having the assurances that set forth uh, in God's word about being a Christian uh, as we w uh, live this Christian life, as we go through the different stages of life, as we encounter different hardships and things of that nature, that he is right along with us. But at the same time, following Jesus is not always easy. And all God's people said, amen. You know, if you've been saved for any amount of time at all, following Jesus uh, isn't always the easy road. Luke chapter nine, starting in verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went the, uh, in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Anywhere you go, I'll follow you, he says. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. The first thing that we see here uh, in the life of this individual, he is following Jesus. He has accepted him as uh, it says as Lord and he, he, he understands the position that he holds and who Jesus claims to be. And he tells Jesus, wherever you go, wherever it is that you lead, uh, you can rest assured, I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. I'll go anywhere that you ask me to go. He had a willingness we see here in Jesus' response to him as Jesus knew his heart and uh, Jesus knew his desire and Jesus knew his shortcoming and failures being God in the flesh, he addresses one of his shortcomings. He said that he was willing to follow, but he was disillusioned as to what following Jesus was all about. He thought that the Christian life, based on the response that Jesus gave, was going to be easy and that he would always get his way. That's not the case, is it? Not completely misguided, but also not completely accurate. He thought that uh, to follow Jesus, to be a follower of Jesus, he thought to follow meant prosperity. 
We've met folks before that uh, that 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 live uh, or that claim Christianity and uh, or maybe call out to Christ and and have a religious experience as a result of hardship that they're going through. Them just wanting an escape from their current uh, situation that they find themselves in. I know I've uh, talked with folks and prayed with folks that, uh, that in their darkest time, uh, even though they, they had no relationship with Christ before and even though they had no desire to follow, that when they were in the bottom of, uh, of, this, in this, uh, the bottom of their life and at the lowest point in their life, they cried out and asked God for, uh, for mercy and asked God for deliverance. And then when he didn't show up, they questioned why. God's not responsible and God's not uh, required in any way whatsoever to hear the cries and to hear the, uh, the plea of an individual that has no relationship with him, an individual that gives him uh, no uh, uh, reverence and no worship in any way whatsoever. God, God's not required to answer their prayer. He thought that following Jesus, following in his steps, going where he commanded him to go, he thought that it was uh, a life of prosperity. That the Christian life following Jesus was going to be pleasurable. That it was all, all about pleasure. He thought that, uh, that if I follow this one who claims to be uh, God in the flesh, that he's going to uh, miraculously take care of everything that I need and I'm going to go through this life on easy street. He thought that this uh, following Jesus, uh, meaning uh, uh, a life of prosperity, meant that he would have power. That if this is the son of God and he has complete authority and he has the authority of God in his life, that, uh, that if these things be true, then uh, being a follower of his means that I'll have a position of power. He thought that following Jesus, being God in the flesh, fulfilling the promises of the coming Messiah. He thought that it was going to mean prominence. That there was going to be something special about him because he was following Jesus. Understand that being a child of God brings with it an understanding that I am nothing without him. There's nothing special about me. Being a follower of his, the only thing uh, special about that is that I'm following him has nothing to do with me. He thought that following Jesus meant prosperity, but he learned in Jesus' response, Jesus says, uh, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He learned that following Jesus isn't about prosperity. Following Jesus is about sacrifice. Following in, in his uh, footsteps, following in his likeness, and uh, following in, 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 as he is guiding and leading us through this life. Sacrifice of comfort. If I am really going to follow him anywhere and everywhere that he wants me to be, anywhere that he desires me to go, if I am going to follow him, it's going to mean stepping out of my comfort zone. God hasn't called any of us to live a comfy, cozy life. He's called us to, uh, as we are pilgrims and strangers in this life, as we are uh, uh, traveling from this life into eternity, our eternal home, he's called us to leave the comforts of modern society, so to speak. Following Jesus means having a willingness to sacrifice comfort. Following Jesus means sacrificing my own personal will. You understand, even, even as a Christian, as a pastor, as a man that I, I, would, uh, I would say of my own life, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has called me to preach the gospel and God has called me to be the pastor of this church but just because I am in his will, just because I'm following his direction, doesn't mean necessarily that it's what I've always wanted. Right? I mean, I had made plans and I had uh, set aside some things and I had, uh, I had purposed in my life right after high school that I was going to uh, go into construction trade and, and uh, man, I was excited about it. I had an awesome apprenticeship and then God said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to 
leave everything that you set up and leave this awesome job and this awesome apprenticeship and I want you to go to Bible college where you don't know anybody. And by the way, I want you to have no money. And by the way, I also want you uh, to, to leave and go to the other side of the country and not have the comforts of uh, family. And uh, probably the hardest aspect of that is I want you to go back to school. Amen, everybody who uh, struggled through school. It wasn't my will. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted. But following Jesus means sacrificing my will. It means sacrificing the comforts, of, uh, what would seemingly be the comforts of life. It means sacrificing my ambition. Some were... Uh, some are willing to, to, to say the words, I'll follow you wherever you go. But Jesus addresses, even though they had the uh, thought that following meant prosperity, Jesus writes that ship and shows them that following him means sacrifice. He goes on in verses 59 and 60, and it says, And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. We see here that some are willing, but are kind of disoriented. Here, here's what's taking place here. He wanted to spend time with his dad before his dad passed. Is there anything wrong with that? No, no. Not in and of itself, not a bad thing to do. We just are, we're given an understanding that it's not what Jesus wanted him to do at that moment. Understand this, that uh, he thought that following, being a follower of Jesus or following Jesus meant convenience. The Christian life isn't designed to be convenient. It's not designed to, uh, to, uh, to fit our ideas of what should be. He thought that following uh, Jesus meant convenience. Uh, uh, you know, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll, I'll follow Jesus when it's convenient for me. Right now, you know, I, I don't have the ability to give. I don't have the ability to serve. Right now, I've got all this mountain of, uh, of different responsibilities that I have. I don't really have time to pray, and I don't really have time to read my Bible. I don't really have time to go and listen to the, the preacher yell at me for an hour. Uh, you know, I'll do those things tomorrow. I'll make up for it uh, next week, and I'll, I'll give double, and I'll do double, and I'll serve double. The Christian life isn't designed of God to be convenient. It's not about what, uh, what we want. It's not about what fits in our schedule. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll take care of it later. He thought that following Jesus meant convenience. Jesus never promised that the Christian life would be convenient. When he, was, uh, uh, when he asked him to follow him, he said, go, uh, let me go bury my father. He, you know, given an understanding of being at the point of, uh, of death. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. He thought following Jesus meant convenience, but he learned that following Jesus means obedience. Again, there's nothing wrong with, uh, with his desire and want to spend time with his dad and want to, uh, to, to do his part and to, uh, to have that little bit of time left. There was nothing wrong with it other than the fact that it wasn't what God had called him to do. Understand that uh, to delay is to disobey. To put it off to tomorrow, to procrastinate, to, uh, to, to live this, uh, uh, this uh, pseudo-Christian life of convenience is not what God has called us to do. To be obedient means that when Jesus says, I want you to do it now, that we do it now. That when he says today is the day, that we follow through today. Right here, right now. I, we see it over and over and over, and I've seen it in my own life and uh, in, in the decisions that I've made. And yeah, I know what God wants me to do, and he's laid it out for me, and it, he's made it abundantly clear. 
but I but I've made this plan. I've made this plan, and and really it doesn't fit in my narrative. It doesn't fit in what I want to do. It doesn't fit uh, categorically in place anywhere. So I'll just put it off until tomorrow. I've seen it in uh, folks' life as, as the Holy Spirit is raining down conviction and uh, the Lord is leading and guiding and encouraging and, uh, you know, the, the invitation is given and you're sitting at your, your pew and you're white-knuckled and you're just waiting and hoping that I'll shut up. I got a roast in the oven. I don't have time to be here all afternoon. I've got a family that I'm meeting after service today. I have some wild oats to sow. I don't have the opportunity. I don't have the time. Uh, it doesn't fit in what I consider convenient. To be a follower of Jesus, Jesus says it takes obedience right here, right now, right away. Not delaying in any way, but complete obedience. The last thing that we see uh, as Jesus is giving us an understanding of the cost of being a follower of his, uh, verses 61 and 62. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my, or which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looketh back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, I like house guests as much as the rest. Not as much as Brother Ashley, amen? The reality is, some folks stay past their welcome. This individual is using the guests that he has in his home as an excuse of disobedience. He says, he says, I will follow. I'll do what it is you've asked. I'll follow you wherever you want me to go, just like the first one did. He wanted to, uh, he said, but first let me set my house in order, making sure that his family was taken care of and he had something to fall back on. Not a bad thing to make sure your family is taken care of. Not a bad thing uh, to have something to fall back on. There's nothing wrong with preparing for tomorrow. But it wasn't what Jesus wanted for him at that moment. He had a willingness uh, to be a follower of Jesus, but he was distracted uh, by his guests, distracted by his friends, distracted by his family. He was distracted from what it was that God was calling him to do. He thought that following Jesus meant leisure, that he could follow and, and be pleasing to Jesus, that he could follow and be, uh, be accepted by Jesus, that he could follow half-heartedly, that he could follow Jesus uh, with his interest divided, half-interest in what Jesus was doing. The reality is he thought that following Jesus meant a life of leisure, but that's not the case. You, you understand that, uh, that these uh, false premises, these false ideas that are talked about are something that, uh, that we face and that we come in conflict with every day. That, uh, that the life of Christianity, that uh, following Jesus meant uh, convenience and meant, uh, meant, uh, means prosperity and means leisure. God hasn't called us. He hasn't promised us any of those things. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus promises us that if we follow him, we will suffer persecution. He thought following meant leisure. I, I can live this life half-hearted and half-interested. By the way, if we take God's word, the whole thing as literal, and we, we recognize that we have this enemy that's, a, that's mounting an assault against us on a daily basis, and his desire is to destroy us, he's pictured as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If those things are true, we can't afford to go through this life half-heartedly. We can't afford to be half interested. We've got to give it our complete effort. He learned through Jesus' response that following Jesus means complete dedication. No man having put his hand to the plow, no man having started this work and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God is what he says. Complete dedication means no looking back. 
I can't be half in and half out. I can't uh, have half faith and I can't have half trust and I can't have half dedication and uh, half uh, deliberate, uh, deliberate. I can't even get the word out. I can't be half uh, dedicated to the cause of Christ. I can't be halfway in and halfway out. Learning, uh, he learned that following Jesus means complete dedication. No looking back to see where he's been and what he's missed out on. No looking around to see whether he be in the populace. Following Jesus means dedicated wherever he leads. Being a follower of Jesus means sacrifice. Being a follower of Jesus, Jesus means living a life of obedience. Being a follower of Jesus means living a life dedicated to his cause and his purpose. So the question that we got to ask ourselves as we close out this evening is, am I really a follower of Jesus? Am I following a false gospel which just teaches comfort and a cozy life? Am I, uh, am I following a false gospel that, that, that points to a life of leisure and a life of happiness and uh, prosperity? None of those things are promised of Christ. But he gives us the requirement of sacrifice, obedience, and dedication. Am I following, am I a follower of Christ? We'll read through these verses again and then we'll close out with a word of prayer. It says, and it came to pass that as they went their way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee wherever thou goest. Anywhere you lead, I'll go. And Jesus says, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's not about comfort. It's not about prosperity. It's not about a life of leisure. Being a follower of Christ is being willing to follow through with the statements that were made. I will follow you wherever you lead. I'll follow you wherever you go. I'll be willing to put up the fight. I'll be willing to put forth the effort. I'll be willing to go through those dark times. I'll be willing to go uh, through those places of devastation. I'll be willing to follow you because I trust you. You see, we have to understand that just having a willingness to follow isn't enough. It's got to be backed up with a lifestyle. It's got to be backed up with the actions that we put forth.